you coddle a child to protect them, care for them so much, it will be to their detriment because the pain and the suffering actually leads to something that is good. A lot of times we tend to focus on the Holy Week with the physical suffering of Jesus, but equally important is what happens on Sunday where Jesus is nowhere to be found. Welcome to Adulting with Joyce Spring. Watch the full video of this episode on my channel, www.youtube.com slash TV. And if you want to level up your adulting game, check out joyspring.com slash collections for my digital products and courses. Our guest for today is Pastor Zuriel Bernardino. Pastor Z is happily married to Hannah and serves as lead pastor of Heroes Church BGC in Manila, Philippines. He serves as the regional director for Acts 29 Asia Pacific as well as the movement leader for City to City Philippines. Zuriel is passionate about discovering church planters and coaching them towards healthy churches. So Pastor Z, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Joyce. I'm so happy that you're here and talking about something that is so important in our Christian walk, which is Holy Week or to some people Easter. But I've heard that in the Philippines daw, talagang mas kilala natin itong celebration na to as Holy Week. Tama ba yun? Well, I think practically it's it. We, we call it Holy Week because we celebrate it longer than most regions in the world. Many of us are taking off starting on Thursday all the way till Sunday. You know, I was telling our friends here earlier before we started rolling that before I came into Christ and before God saved me, I really didn't understand what Holy Week was all about. To me, when I was working full-time in entertainment, it was the only time during the whole year that I really get to take a long break. Because when you're in media, especially with events, lagging busy, Christmas season, all the holidays, you don't get any holidays. It's just Holy Week that you really have an extended period of vacation. So correct, to me, it correct. was just vacation. Yes. But when I became a Christian and finally surrendered my life to Jesus by His grace, Grabe pala yung meaning nitong Holy Week, di ba? So for those of us who are still trying to understand what Holy Week is all about, what the celebration is all about, can, all about, can you tell us more about it? And even maybe cite places in the Bible where we could see why this is so important. Well, I'm happy you put it that way because, you know, I, I can imagine how people who are busy really appreciate the Holy Week celebration in the Philippines because we traditionally don't do anything on Friday. It's really a commemoration of the final days of Jesus on earth. And the series of events that lead to his passion, death, and resurrection are rehearsed and remembered and celebrated during this week. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's quite important. I can point you to John and we could go to John chapter 12. Now, I'm pointing this out because John chapter 12 happens, obviously, after John chapter 11. But in John chapter 11, we have the death of Lazarus. And then we all know the story, Jesus resurrected Lazarus from the dead. Now, this is very important coming to the Holy Week because up until this time, Jesus has been, he has been trending in society as a great teacher. But when he resurrected Lazarus from the dead, that's when suddenly people had to come face to face with the likelihood that they would have to consider him as the Messiah. The moment Jesus resurrected Lazarus from the dead, that was also the same moment he put a target on his back, mm -hmm. right? So enter Palm Sunday on John chapter 12, the next chapter. This is the first time after that miracle of resurrection, that Jesus appears. So he came into some sort of um, cover, and now he appears on John chapter 12, and now comes his procession. Mm -hmm. So John chapter 12 talks about the triumphal entry of Jesus, and in verse 12 of chapter 12, it says, The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And the famous image is in verse 14. Mm -hmm. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. So this was a prophecy directly connected to the Old Testament in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. It's easy to remember because 12.12, 12, John 12.12, 12, 
<laughs> and Zechariah yeah. 9 9. So, you know, you know your dates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this shows us that Jesus coming on a donkey, sometimes as a 21st century reader, we always think, oh, it's a symbol of humility. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he come in a horse? Mm -hmm. But the people watching Jesus enter Jerusalem understood quite well what was going on. Mm. It was a prophecy being fulfilled. It was a, you have that. For one, the scriptural reference to the Old Testament shows that it was a prophecy from Zechariah. But not only did you have scriptural reference, you also had a cultural reference. Mm. Uh, less than 200 years prior to Jesus doing that, you also had sort of a, archetypal hero in the in, in the person of Judas Maccabeus doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that same image, that same story of celebrating a hero coming into Jerusalem, but obviously it was a temporary experience because Judas Maccabeus eventually, you know, his revolt didn't really last. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus comes in a very similar fashion coming into Jerusalem as a king. Mm -hmm. That's why Palm Sunday is important because before you even get to the whole uh, trial, betrayal, mm -hmm. sentencing, f physical torture, death on the cross, the resurrection, you have this. It's an announcement. Mm. It's to capture our attention. A proclamation. Yes, that I am the king. Yeah. That's one of the major reflections we can consider is how is Jesus king of your life? Yeah. And I think it also dispels any notion that Jesus was just a wisdom-filled teacher. Mm. He was, yes, mm. but he was not only that. Mm. He claimed to be so much more. He claimed to be the Son of God. And mm. he proclaimed that and he boldly stated that, mm. as you said, you know, by doing, uh, but by riding that donkey mm. into Jerusalem and having that kind of scriptural um prophecy as well. Mm. So Pastor Z, can you walk us through then what happened after Palm Sunday? So what what are the what are the days commemorating when we talk about Holy Week? Because as you mentioned, right? Like I think most Filipinos understand that oh pag Holy Week, we have all these days that are either limited yung mall hours. So uh -huh. naman, kang extended vacation. Yeah, yung sa gym yeah. naman just told me yesterday, my my coach was like, Oh ma'am, wala tayo sa Thursday, ya, naka shut down tong buong area. Yeah, so right. Thursday pa lang magsha shut down na sila mm -hmm. and then they start opening Friday and Saturday. So walk us through the days of Holy Week and what and align that with what's happening throughout the journey of Jesus to the cross. Okay, well, Joyce, like, to be honest, if I walked you through every day that week, <laughs> this podcast will last a long time. Brief lang. <laughs> <laughs> Brief version yung kaya sa less yeah. than one hour. <laughs> so yeah, but, but, but I'd be happy to do that. So I'd like to know your thoughts also kung bakit siya tinawag na ganun. Because I'm sure there's historical background as to why it's called Monday Thursday, Good Friday. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is, um, he engages people between Monday and Wednesday. He engages people, particularly the religious leaders and the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are now teaming up because again, what I told you, the resurrection of Lazarus was such a big deal mm -hmm. that it put all of these guys who didn't really talk to each other, they also had their own internal rivalries. Now they had reason to come together and sort of try to fix their attempts or, or fix their energy on Jesus mm -hmm. as a common enemy. So this goes on on Mondays and on Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday is crucial because this is when the whole experience of what you see two people who are close to Jesus are have different re responses to him. Mm -hmm. So Judas on Wednesday is now seen engaging these religious leaders and basically selling Jesus out. And this is very important because on the same day, you have the anointing of Jesus with oil by Mary. Mm -hmm. So you have two people, both close to Jesus. One was a disciple and, you know, one was his friend. Mm -hmm. One of them actually betrays him mm -hmm. and one sort of blesses him. Yeah. So what's the difference? So the difference here is this whole time Judas as a disciple was close to Jesus, but for some reason, he has now found incentive to betray Jesus. We, we get the clue into what's going on with his heart. 
now that he's seeing what's happening in, in with the religious leaders trying to gang up on Jesus, he sees his position at risk. This is another thing that we can reflect on this Holy Week is even though we say we're disciples of Jesus. of Jesus, how is our intimacy with him? Are we close to Jesus because we're getting something? If given the right incentive, yes. would you give up your allegiance to your Lord? The Lordship of Jesus, kumbaga. Most of us have an internal weighing scale that kicks in whenever threats to ourselves, threats to our family, in this case, threat, possible threat to his livelihood has risen. And now he's coming face to face with the reality that, okay, what is most, more important to me? Is following Jesus still important to me as then? Or is now survival yeah. or protecting myself more important? Which is now the opposite of what's going on with Mary. Because in anointing Jesus' feet with the oil that costs practically a fortune, we see that her generosity revealed the opposite of what was going on in Judas's heart. But rather than seeing Jesus as a necessary means to an end, yeah. to Mary, Jesus was the end. Mm -hmm. He was the good. Worthiness also, right? Mm -hmm. It's the worthiness of Jesus that's being portrayed there. To some, no worth at all. Only 30 pieces of, of silver. Yeah. But to others, it's worthy of the fortune that they're able to give to just anoint and bless Jesus. Correct, correct. At the other hand. So the betrayal happened. Yeah. And, and then we and move now, on to the other days. Now we go to the, cla the, the classical triad, three days. Yeah. Maundy Thursday is called Maundy simply because it comes... It, 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 it has roots in the it, where we take the word command mm. or mandate. Okay. Right? So mandate, mandi. Mm. So this is just a, a, a placeholder for when Jesus holds the Last Supper and tells his disciples, you know, I, like you need to love each other. That's my command that I give to you. Mm. We ourselves have the opportunity this Holy Week to consider how am I being faithful to our Lord? The Last Supper is not only what happens on Thursday. The Garden of Gethsemane part happens that night as well. Mm. Jesus asks James, Peter, and John to go with him to a secluded place mm. in the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. This is when the, 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 the great prayer of Jesus speaking to his Father, now overwhelmed, now like... You know how when you're anticipating something and, and we have this idiom, oh, it just got real, yeah. right? It just got real. Yeah. It was getting real now for Jesus. Mm -hmm. The description in the scripture is he gets so overwhelmed that he's sweating. Blood. And he asks if it's possible to let this cup pass over him. Exactly. That's such an amazing, brave prayer of Jesus in the garden. He knows that this is the one moment in his life where he has to be separated from the Father. And I think it's also an interesting look at how human that emotion is, right? And to fully understand what Jesus went through when he took on human form, mm. you just have to look at that night in Gethsemane. Now, mm. there, there's that kind of reluctance, there's that fear of an anticipation, and that Really, but also humility at the end, because not only did he say that if it's possible, I don't want this, but let your will be done yes. was the ending of his, you know, plead to his father. So it's beautiful because you get to see the humanness of Jesus in that, in that, in that last, in those last few moments, right? Okay, so all of these things happened in Monday Thursday, and now we go into Good Friday, which is. Not necessarily good. I don't know why people call it Good Friday. Pastor Z, tell us more about it. Obviously, when we when we say we've culturally called it good, we're probably using it from a post-event understanding. Yes, that's true. Right? That, that <laughs> we know what happened. We know the purpose of why Jesus died. And it's all for, for us, for our sins, to save us. Most important day of our existence. <laughs> yes. We, we traditionally celebrate Friday as the day Jesus actually died. Mm -hmm. in, the sa in the same way that the, 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 the pseudo-savior, Judas Maccabeus, was killed and then the revolt finished, now Jesus' death potentially speaks to that, that current situation as a failed revolt. 
if only for that time, yeah. it seemed Jesus was defeated. But again, the story did not end there. Mm. And, and I think this shift is so important because a lot of times we tend to focus on the Holy Week with the physical suffering of Jesus, his agony, and his death on the cross. Mm-hmm. But the most important part. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Equally important is what happens on Sunday yeah. where Jesus is nowhere to be found. Women come to the tomb to try to honor his death by probably you no know, taking care of his body, but suddenly the tomb was open and it was empty. Now, you know, proves not only is his message true, but his person and his being God is true as well. Mm. And his resurrection, you know, seals our salvation. We now have hope of our own resurrection, mm. not only spiritually, but holistically in, in, in every aspect of the word. And, we, and the Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians that without this resurrection, there is no justification. That's right. So without this resurrection, the good news is incomplete. Yeah, Joyce, I was thinking, you know, Philippines is so known because we're such a Christmas nation. Yeah. We celebrate Christmas almost all year round, starting from September all the way till February. Mm -hmm. Some people don't even remove their Christmas decorations for the rest of the year. I feel personally attacked by this statement. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, our house too is like that. (laughs) But I'm just saying, you know, imagine that. September, October, November, December, January, February. Almost six months we celebrate Christmas. Yes. And then we allow ourselves to immerse into one week of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Like, it it practically shows us what our priorities are. Yeah. Right? Like, we want the celebration, we think. It's the hamon that we're thinking about. (laughs) It's not really the Lord. The the innocence, the innocence of the the infant Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I hope that, you know, this conversation, when we start thinking about this, is allowing us to see that the Holy Week does deserve its space as much as, Christmas even yeah. more yeah yeah I think so uh, I, but as I mentioned earlier it's only something that you really deeply and seriously think about once you understand what the importance of Holy Week is mm. and I love when you were talking about the, the day-to-day that happened throughout from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday and on Good Friday, I always remember yung tetelestai, it is finished. Yes. In his last moments, that's what Jesus proclaimed. It mm. is finished. Mm. And incredible because um, I remember when I was doing my research on Holy Week, there are some accounts kasi, diba, that the first people who saw the empty tomb were women. Correct. And they were saying that if this was just a made-up story, then they wouldn't make women as the first witnesses because it was technically not even useful to say that the woman was a witness during that period of time. That's mm. one. And to kind of parallel what you were talking about with Judas Maccabeus, it ended the revolt when he died, right? Mm, yes. But in this revolt, it mm. actually started. Like, the Christians, during this time, when they when the news came about that Jesus resurrected from the dead, when you have this uh, these passages, well, you know, they're still awake. You can ask them personally. 500 people still saw him, you know. There are witnesses that they're still alive right now. You can ask them personally mm. while they were writing the, the Gospels and, and the New Testament. You could see that there are still witnesses to this. Hold fast. Don't mm. be afraid. They're hunting Christians down. Mm. But we know this and there are people who are still alive today that you can ask about the eyewitness accounts of Correct. this actually happening. Correct. And from Judas Maccabeus that ended the revolt, this actually started the revolt. Like if you ask the question, why did Christianity survive if, if, if this were just another revolt mm. that could have just died with their Messiah mm. or with their Savior? Why did it continue on mm. thousands of years after? That's truly because of the resurrection. Yeah. And, and you're right. The eyewitness accounts are very telling proof of the resurrection account. Mm-hmm. Obviously, since this is the singular biggest event of history and our faith, mm-hmm. that's easily also what many enemies of our faith will try to attack. Yeah. If it were untrue, mm. then even then, 
the people would have discovered that it were it it wasn't even in our culture and times today mm-hmm. like what things does the resurrection of Jesus what thing does the passion death and resurrection what has Jesus accomplished for us on the cross mm-hmm. how does it intersect and challenge our lifestyle our perspective what we normally consider our 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 standards mm-hmm. um, of right and wrong yeah. and and how how does you know this revolution that started in the fir- in 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 AD 33 become so meaningful to us even today right? well one of the most convicting things that i feel like i encountered in my walk with jesus when i really sat down and understood holy week was if jesus rose from the dead which i believe he did then i should believe everything that he commanded and said and not question it because you can have all of these other questions and nuances and your own standards and your own belief systems no no i have to tailor the bible according to what i want because whatever right mm. but if jesus rose from the dead mm. which is what we claim to believe which mm. is what we believe as christians mm. then we must submit mm. cuz that is the proof that he has got no human being has ever risen from the dead apart from Jesus right yes so i i i think that's why holy week holds such a weighty experience should be as, as it should be in our christian walks but now that we've walked through it pastor z we understand a little bit more about the details of what holy week is all about why we celebrate it and why it's so important in Christianity not even in Christianity but in the whole of history. I mean we could start talking about how the resurrection of Jesus started off so many other historical uh circumstances, right? And important events in history because of that. But I wanted to talk about now the practical ways that we should be celebrating Holy Week as Christians because as you mentioned, the papayang bakit nga ba natin sobrang sinaselebrate ang Christmas season but not Holy Week? So what should be your disposition when we're celebrating Holy Week? Kailangan ba laging may fasting? What are some of the things that we could be focusing on as a testament to our faith when it is Holy Week? This approaching Holy Week. You know, we, we already have currently the cultural tools that are available for us to maximize ref- our reflection and appreciation of Holy Week. Now we're gi- given the opportunity to you know, have a bit of downtime. So I think that downtime helps us to consider that maybe during this week, we can approach it with a certain level of openness mm-hmm. or humility into what the Lord is teaching us or wants us to learn in this season. Yeah. Um, so fasting, fasting is definitely a great tool, even though you mentioned earlier that it is a very human experience to You know, to be vulnerable, like in the garden, it's also a very uncomfortable position. Yeah. Truth is, none of us desire that. Like we, we want to avoid that as much as possible. We don't want pain. We don't want suffering. Mm-hmm. We don't. We we just want to think about, you know, God giving us blessings, rewarding us for our good deeds. But this Holy Week is a huge challenge because now it really, it really hits us hard that if God did not. Spare his only son from suffering and pain. How much more, you know, should should we consider that pain and suffering are natural, God-given tools in our lives to mold us into what He wants us to be? Looking at Jesus, and if He suffered, then why are we complaining about our own suffering? Mm. Learning how to process our own suffering, our own challenges, our own crosses in this world. Is such an important grace, such an important lesson that will um, spell out how we can overcome as Christians in this world. That's so difficult, though, mm. because instead of asking why me, you ask why not me. Mm. That's such a difficult thing to do, you know, especially when you're in the thick of suffering and pain, and of course, you have this reflection of. Jesus also went through much worse for me. So suffering and pain is a tool through which the Father prunes His children to become more Christ-like. Mm. Exactly what happened to Christ on the cross, right? It's the pruning and death on the cross, so that by the altar you are renewed and rebirthed. 
But the question of why not me is such a difficult question. And, and, and it's something that I've actually been ruminating on recently. Now, oh, nga, no? Especially when you have children, I've realized that you want to avoid as much pain and suffering for, for your them. children. For them, yeah. You yeah, don't yeah, want, yeah. like, if yeah. I could take it on as much as possible, I don't want my children to take on anything. But then I was reading this book that talked about. And even in biblical reflections, you see it. Na you coddle a child to protect them and to care for them so much, it will be to their detriment. Mm. Because the pain and the suffering actually leads to something that is good, mm. like what we see in Holy Week. Um, but finally, Pastor Z, I want to thank you for such an incredible insight to Holy Week. Now I want to talk about my last question would be, how do we engage this in conversation, especially with family or friends who might not have the same understanding of Holy Week, who might not believe in the same things as we do? How do we make this an intentional conversation during Holy Week for our friends and our family who we want to share the beauty and the importance of Holy Week too? The, the, the Holy Week narratives invite us to a part of the Bible that is full on storytelling. And I think for for non for non-Christian friends or family, people who are exploring Christianity, inviting, engaging them by inviting them to read into these stories is 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 I think a good way of introducing them to the to the wonderful meaning of Holy Week. You know, we're such a story, you know, story loving community. Like Especially the Philippines, we, we love our K dramas, mm -hmm. our movies, our our, our 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 stories of heroes, and and the Holy Week is such a such a good drama playing out. Mm -hmm. Like every character involved could be an introduction or an, an entry point to our friends and family. Yeah. And and as you build the narrative, you culminate into, you know, the main character obviously is is Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say. You know, I think don't assume that the that people know the story. Yeah. But you know, allow yourself first and foremost yourself to read it. Mm -hmm. You know, like familiarize yourself with the story. So they start with John twelve. If they want to go through the entire Holy Week, what would be your advice? Like, where where do they go into the scripture to read through? You could go through, you know, the the the, the end chapters of like Matthew and Luke and John. And even Mark, mm -hmm. who documents this, this these things, and again, for me, for me personally, I love hero move he, hero stories. My favorite scene is the Garden of Gethsemane. If there was a time, I always think if there was a time, Jesus could have folded the mission and said, "I ain't doing Ayoko this." Na. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. This is it. And imagine what you said. You're a parent. You never want your kids. To be in pain, mm. like you know, as a parent, you know when it's a fake cry, right? Yeah. You know it's a fake cry, like your your kid is crying, but for no reason, mm -hmm. like he's just trying to like get you to be do naughty. What they want. Yeah. But there's a real cry, mm -hmm. and even if you're far away, your your kid your kid shouts, you know it's real, yeah. and you're like you're gonna try to do everything to respond to that cry. Imagine the garden. Not only are we featuring Jesus. Imagine how the father is feeling. How the father is feeling. Yeah. Imagine Jesus praying in his peripheral vision. He sees these three sleeping, maybe snoring, maybe like saliva coming out of someone's mouth. Yeah. And he's like, these are the three guys who I'm going to die for. <laughs> like th this, is, this, is, this is the best representation of people I'm going to die if for. If anything, that's the best representation of people that he's going yes. to die for. That's yes. us. That's us, right? It's like... We're imperfect. We're like sinners. We, we fail at the, the, the wrong moments. And, and Jesus, imagine, right? Jesus, he could have just given up, right? He could just like, like these, I'm dying for these people, yeah. right? Like, like, I taught these people. I lived with these people for three years, mm -hmm. right? We worship God every Sunday. None of us can claim we've been with Jesus every day physically, yeah. except these three guys. And they still, they still couldn't, do what Jesus asked mm -hmm. them to do. And I think this is what Jesus, what makes Jesus the ultimate hero mm -hmm. is his secondary statement. His, his, the first statement was, Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. But see, this is where Jesus, Jesus just gets me. 
that gets all of me because Jesus says, but not my will, but yours be done. No one will do that. That's what makes for me ultimately Jesus as my hero, mm. right? And and he deserves all my glory. All my 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 effort, all my, my 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 praise because of what he he, it's all full of drama, real drama, true to life, nonfiction that actually gives us the most important story of our lives. The most important story of our lives, indeed. Pastor Z, thank you so much for yeah. an incredible insight to Holy Week, and I think such a practical way to culminate this whole conversation, which is there are so many instances, characters, and opportunities mm -hmm. in the story of um, Jesus' walk through Holy Week that we can relate to and mm -hmm. open up to our friends and our families too. We hope that this was something that was helpful to you as well. And if you have your own reflections on Holy Week and how you're observing it, please do let us know and share it with us at Adulting with Joy Spring. But for now, that's it for this episode. Yay! Maraming salamat, Pastor Z. Thank you for you're being welcome. here. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Paalam. Bye. That's it for this episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. If you liked this podcast, please don't forget to use the hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring and also check out www.joyspring.com for the show notes and tag me on social media with you know it at Joy Spring. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Paalam!